uh, dear panelists, now we have uh, Mr. Sankar Venkataraman, uh, who will be giving his keynote presentation themed as Evolving Enterprise with Cloud and Edge Infra. Uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Sankat Venkatraman is Senior Vice President, Cloud and Digital Platforms at Datasat. Now the stage is all yours, uh, Sankar. Hey, thanks, Bridget. Thanks for having me. Um, good evening, all of you. So, my uh, as Bridget said, uh, uh, the topic for my session today is how enterprises in the kingdom um, are evolving with the cloud and edge strategy. Um, before we get into the presentation, a quick preamble. Uh, the points of view that I'm going to share today should be viewed in conjunction with the Vision 2030 program that has been stated by the government. A lot of what we are seeing in the marketplace and what we are doing as a company uh, is pretty much aligned to the, the big program that has been led out by the government. So well, first and foremost, um, I just wanted to have a bird's eye view of what is happening uh, in terms of the cloud adoption in the kingdom. Uh, thanks to the cloud first policy uh, by the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology, um, there has been a significant push in terms of adoption to the cloud, both the private and the public cloud. Uh, I would say in the past maybe two, two, three, two, two and a half to three years. I think uh, one of the most uh, significant, I think, uptake onto the cloud has been uh, in the past 12 to 18 months, right, where the, the COVID has been playing a rampant. And more than 25% of the large enterprises that uh, we have seen in the kingdom have already started moving their workloads. Um, into the cloud, uh, you know, and this this is a source. This is a data that has been verified by IDC as a source. Um, one other important topic that is very important for us to consider is the number of data centers that we have in the kingdom today. There are over 400 data centers. Some of them very small, um, you know, not complying to uh, the regulatory requirements. And the the ministry has taken a very firm foot on consolidating these data centers rather than having too many uh, with very little impact uh, to move into very large scale data centers, which will give the economy of scale and also bring down the cost. So that's another uh, significant improvement that we are seeing in the cloud space in the kingdom. And one other thing, uh, you know, because Datasat as a company, uh, we are not only a, a cloud service provider, but we also uh, uh, you know, we are a data center operator, so we do both. Uh, and by the virtue of this, we have been serving several customers across various industries. And one important phenomena that we are seeing is some of the companies are definitely coming back to us and asking us, don't just give me infrastructure. If you can give me a complete platform, uh, you know, for my particular industry, it will be great. So when I say platform, it starts with a bare metal. What kind of servers, be it compute or be it uh, storage devices, uh, what kind of uh, OS and virtualization layer that needs to go in depending on the application, uh, what kind of uh, application platform itself, right? Uh, should it be cloud enabled or cloud native and so on and so forth. And on top of it, uh, AI built into the stack. And finally, as an icing on the cake, how a cybersecurity solution can also be fitted into the stack or a platform is a, a kind of a need that we are seeing in the marketplace, right? So uh, the cloud is just no longer uh, offering infrastructure as a service. Uh, we are witnessing, uh, you know, very specialized cloud stacks that are actually getting into the market. Now, having said all this, uh, we still are seeing that only 50% of the applications um, are moving to the cloud. There are still a significant portion of the applications still remain on-prem. Uh, for various reasons, right? Uh, one, the most important is the what we call as the law of land, uh, which is the data residency and sovereignty requirement. So depending on the industry uh, that is uh, uh, under consideration, um, the data needs to either stay within the country or many a times uh, within the premise itself. So uh, that is one of the reasons why you don't see many of these applications moving into uh, an actual cloud, maybe a private or a public cloud. The second, uh, uh, one of the reasons why we find, uh, you know, the applications still are on-prem on is on the latency issue. So there are applications which require um, quick 
uh, turnaround times and quick responses. And if you're just trying to put data into the cloud, you know, you're not going to see those kind of responses. So latency is uh, another big requirement which we are seeing in the marketplace. Uh, the third and most important is the security. Um, you know, there are several customers that we have been working with who are very specific or very particular about uh, the cybersecurity vulnerability, right? Um, so be it on both their information technology assets or maybe the OT assets, they're extremely uh, particular about, you know, what kind of uh, cybersecurity strategy that we have put in place and how we are going to address it. And the last one is the complexity itself, right? Uh, there are so many applications which are still legacy, um, which are maybe, you know, highly customized and you, you cannot find its way into the public cloud. So you also find those applications, um, you know, which, which need to be on-prem. So all in all, you know, some of these constraints definitely actually, you know, make us think uh, how we can still move these kind of applications to the cloud uh, and taking into consideration some of the points that, that you see on the slide. And it, what is coming out, which is very imminent, is uh, the edge compute itself, right? So uh, a quick recap on edge, most of you know what an edge is. But just a very quick recap, edge is nothing but um, processing of data at the source itself, right? And the source can be anything, any device that you probably can think of. It can be a industrial device, which is, you know, any sensor that you can think of in a factory, or maybe a consumer device like your mobile, or maybe a commercial device like your wearable or whatever it is. So any device where the processing happens uh, very next to the device uh, is, uh, in a nutshell, what we call as edge computing. And edge computing has three layers to it. You know, one is the uh, end node where the, the data is actually gathered, and it is actually sent to a, a edge device which is very closer to the device, uh, and it's nothing but a you know a few servers which which may, which is very which is placed very close to the device. What we call as the processing plane. Now, uh, the processing plane itself is nothing but a, a set of servers, uh, you know, and these servers are something which is extremely important in terms of the choice we make. Um, you know, we at DataSart, we actually work with uh, some of the leading hardware providers to make sure that the hardware that we choose for the edge serving uh, or edge computing is really thought through. Uh, because of some of these harsh conditions that we witness in the kingdom, uh, the edge server has to be very rugged, uh, need to take care of so much of heat and so on and so forth. So we have, uh, you know, and by the virtue of us being in this industry for maybe almost four decades, so we continuously give inputs to some of these hardware providers who then help us out in defining the most appropriate hardware, uh, which can actually be used as a um, edge server, right? So uh, that is where most of the compute happens. And, and of course, uh, you can take additional data from these edge servers into your cloud uh, for any additional maybe uh, in analysis that you probably can do. So, so having said this, moving into what are the drivers? Why uh, you know edge computing is becoming extremely dominant uh, in the kingdom, uh, and this is where I think we'll have to align quickly to the vision 2030. And I'm just taking some uh, very few objectives um, that the kingdom has laid. Uh, for example, in manufacturing, one of the most important thing is how can um, the non-oil GDP increase from 16% to 50% in about six to seven years time. And that is no, uh, a, a small kind of a, an ambition. It's a very tall ambition and for which uh, the number of factories that have to come up in the kingdom uh, and all these factories have to be highly automated so that they can be as productive as possible from day one. Uh, and also with very less maintenance, which means that there cannot be any downtime at all. Uh, so, so there is, which means that everything has to be driven by your IoT devices on the edge, right? So you need to have devices in the factory which can take decisions uh, about how these factories are being run in an optimal way um, so that the production keeps increasing with very little downtime. Uh, and the second most important objective is uh, from a logistics point of view, uh, currently the kingdom is ranked 49 globally and uh, the, the, uh, the vision is to actually move from 49 to 25. Now this also means that uh, your supply chain has to be really, really, you know, super sharp, which means you've got to have real-time monitoring 
of every single maybe goods that are being manufactured uh, in various different industries and also the uh, overall efficiency of equipment have to significantly go up. Now, all this really alludes to the fact that uh, just having a cloud is not going to help. You've got to have a, a almost like a cloud kind of a power closer to the device uh, for decisions to be taken so that the, the vision that has been laid out can be, can be realized. The second uh, most important thing from um, a vision point of view is smart cities, right? One of the objective is three, three of the Saudi cities now need to be recognized in the top 100 uh, cities in the world. Now that means uh, your social capital index have to, has to go up. Uh, it means that every aspect of the city needs to be really monitored and the services for that particular city has to be rendered in the most efficient way. You know, it can be, um, you know, sewerage system, water system, electricity, theft, burglary, gas leak, so on and so forth. You can actually keep counting on it. Now, many of the points that I actually mentioned, if the data has to be sent to a cloud for any processing and then action to be taken, uh, you're going to lose what we, what we call as a golden hour. So a, for, for the cities to be really world-class and to be ranked in the top 100, a lot of the parameters and a lot of decisions have to be taken within the city, which means you've got to have an edge in the city, very close to the, 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 uh, the, the city itself. So that's another significant area that we're seeing that it's going to really, uh, you know, where the edge computer is going to play a role. Um, and one other important objective is uh, there are so many reserves and so many heritage sites in the kingdom today, which, uh, uh, which needs to be doubled. And that also leads to the fact that these reserves and heritage sites have to be monitored um, and, and has to have a you know, high level of connectivity to make sure that you know, they, they, are, they are kind of secure and uh, uh, they are well taken care of. Once again, edge compute is the way out because you just cannot wait um, for some uh, event to happen. And when it goes to the cloud and come back, I think it would be too late. So. Again, there's a need for the edge to actually play a significant role. Healthcare, um, this is a very interesting objective where um, as part of the vision 2030, the average life expectancy has to increase from 74 to 80. Now, there's a lot of parameters behind this um, to make that happen. One is, of course, you've got to be very proactive in the diagnosis um, and you know your, your overall medical system has to be tightly integrated. Uh, where the, the, the patient record has to be very seamlessly kind of connected or migrated from uh, you know, one location to another location, be it from an ambulance to a clinic to a hospital or maybe to your doctor, so on and so forth, right? So there is enormous amount of uh, impetus given to the healthcare and, uh, and most importantly, the data has to reside very, very close, not even in the public cloud, but has to be very close to the hospital itself. So there, then there cannot be a better kind of a case study or a need for having an edge compute or an edge cloud um, in, the, in the healthcare uh, area. And, and one other important, of course, there are so many objectives, but one, one objective which I felt was very important was, uh, and interesting, was the increase in the household spending on entertainment, uh, which is very, very, uh, very important and uh, very unique, right? So the intent is uh, there has to be a lot of cultural programs and entertainment where the where the, the public has to spend more money on uh, and almost from 2.9 to 6%, that's a huge money. Now for which uh, the streaming of data has to be localized, the speed with which with almost like a low latency, uh, people need to now start viewing the local programs and subscribe to them as much as possible. And also the production of the content itself is not going to be easy, right? So production of content uh, where you can actually live stream uh, these content into, uh, you know, to the end user is something which is going to be important once again. So the edge computing is, is going to play a significant role. Now, what are the considerations uh, for an enterprise, right? You know, we spoke about uh, how cloud is actually, you know, playing a big role and what is the need for an edge compute uh, in the kingdom, but what are the other considerations? First and foremost, uh, the cloud uh, you know, the edge computing cannot be looked at in isolation. Now, it is, uh, it, we should say that it should never compete with a cloud, but it should be complete with a cloud. Um, so edge and cloud have to actually coexist, and there has to be so much of interconnectivity between both. 
So no architecture with isolation is really going to help us. Second, uh, any enterprise which is going to, which is planning to have both a cloud and well and as well as a edge kind of a strategy, need to look into some of these areas. One, uh, skill set. There is going to be a huge demand for very specialized skill set uh, who can actually work on uh, defining security for your operational, uh, you know, OT kind of an asset. Uh, who can also put in models. Artificial into AI models. Uh, once we get the data uh, from the devices into the into the IoT platform, right? So, what monetizing the data and making sense of the data is something which is going to be extremely critical, and you need to have the right resource to make it happen. Um, one other, uh, uh, I think, uh, in, which is very uh, prominent for the kingdom is, uh, you know, there are so many uh, PLCs and SCADA which is outdated, right? So, because of all the legacy nature now. It requires uh, very specialized skill sets uh, to extract data from these kind of devices and make it push into the edge for any kind of further analysis. So you need some special skills to actually, uh, you know, take care of those. So skill uh, having specialized skills uh, to to manage your edge compute is of paramount importance. Uh, one other aspect that we found uh, as a CSP is. Uh, you know, many of the customers, uh, it is just not the question of moving their workload or application into the cloud. Uh, they also want what we call as a first line support, right? Once the application is moving to the cloud and if any of the business user has a, is a challenge of using the cloud or the application, they need to have some kind of a support, right? It cannot be like you push the thing into the cloud and I forget what happens, right? So that, um, you know, handholding or the technical support for applications that move into the cloud is, is something which is uh, important to be considered for an enterprise. And uh, when you're talking about edge, there are so many devices that we have in the edge. Um, now, uh, you know, and, and, and these devices need to kind of be standardized. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have the interoperability issue. So what we, what we have witnessed in the marketplace is uh, if you can choose a platform uh, which is uh, which is kind of uh, very standardized and very well known. One of the leading platforms in the market where many of the devices uh, have been either benchmarked or calibrated to work on the platform, that would be the most ideal scenario. Uh, otherwise, if you don't have a uh, you know good platform, IoT platform, and you have plethora of devices, your interoperability is going to be a massive issue. Um, and you know, Cost of connectivity also is something which uh, we felt that has to be considered for the enterprise. Uh, you know, when they are actually, uh, you know, choosing a, an edge and a cloud, uh, because you know you can't. You have to decide what kind of data uh, has to be pushed into, uh, you know, a, a, a what we call as a a central cloud, and what kind of um, connectivity has to be established. Now, you can't have. For very trivial data, you can't have a very expensive connection like a VSAT. But at the same time, if you have a very critical data, you can't have a low bandwidth or a low uh, uh, performance uh, uh, connectivity. So it's a it's a trade-off that uh, you know we need to think through. Uh, you know, for any 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 kind of an enterprise which is actually thinking of uh, having an edge and a and a central cloud, need to think through uh, this overall connectivity as a, as an important aspect. So I would probably stop here. Um, just wanting to know if there are any questions. Otherwise, I will probably stop here. Much, uh, Sankar, for the wonderful uh, keynote presentation. And uh, as of now, I do not see any questions coming in here. However, if we do see any questions, I will definitely make sure that we are reaching out to you over sure. and over. Thank you so much, Sankar. Thank you. Thank you. Dear panelists uh, and uh, dear uh, Delegates, Datasat uh, is our uh, one of our uh, key sponsors. I request all of you to please go and explore their booths and also network with them.